Four Lies. Hey guys, Rob from Georgia here with you, and I'm your Wednesday night reviewer with Body Bags, and it is theme week. It is nostalgia week. It is pick that movie that you have loved ever since you were a kid, good or bad. But this one happens to be freaking great because we're talking Don Coscarelli's 1979 nightmare logic filled phantasm. And it doesn't get better than this as far as I'm concerned. It was directed, it was written, it was shot, it was edited all by Mr. Coscarelli himself. Of course the cast, Michael Baldwin is Mike, Bill Thornberry is Jody, his older brother Reggie, uh, Bannister is Reggie, their friend, and uh, of course Angus Grimm, the late Angus Grimm, um, unfortunately left us in 2016 as the tall man. Um, released by Avco NBC Pictures, uh, recently of course got the Arrow treatment and also Welco USA treatment domestically. and. Um, so yeah, so we're gonna spend just me and my son Sam. We're gonna spend a few minutes talking about this film and how it impacted not only me, but how it has impacted him, and continues to do so. And um, so yeah, so here we go. Well, Phantasm, 1979. And uh, when I was a kid, I think the first time I've told a story on the podcast uh, via voicemail sometime way long ago, I guess. Um, Basically, in short, I think the first time that I ever saw Phantasm, um, I, I say 13, but I can't remember exactly. It was somewhere between 11 and 13, I think. It was somewhere in there, but uh, I knew it was playing late at night on HBO, probably one or two in the morning. And uh, so, you know, I went out there in the living room and uh, with the of course, the 25-inch console TV and kind of with blanket up over me and the lights off and the sound really as low as I could. You know, I watched and I watched and I watched and I got so sucked into that thing. I had no idea that my dad had heard was up, came out into the living room and right at that right perfect time was literally just towering over me. I had no, no clue and just lays his hands down on my shoulders with, boy, and I, surprised I didn't die at that very second. And uh, so he had a good laugh and we sat down and watched the end. Thoughts, Sam, thoughts on Phantasm? I think it's a really great movie other than um, some of the um, stuff that's added into it, you know, some of the unnecessary stuff, you, need, you know. Um, but other than those small things that are in it, the grand picture of it, I think was really good for a, an independent movie. Um, <clears throat> the music was uh, really great. Um, what do you like about the music? Um, like, like how it how it's doing this, like. What kind of images does it conjure up when you, when you hear this music, or even play this music? Um, like, a dream, of course. Um, uh, a getaway, you know what I mean? Well, okay. I really like it. Um, you know, dream, dream is kind of an interesting word, considering that uh, this movie is absolutely, literally steeped in what we would call, or what's called, dream logic, or in this case, maybe more appropriately, nightmare logic. And we often think of films by Lucio Fulci, the Gates of Hell trilogy, and uh, films that, uh, while to some may seem extremely incoherent or, or just broken up, messy, really isn't at all if you just follow the logic of it. And, uh, and there is a lot going on underneath the surface uh, of this film. and. Uh, and when you think of things like atmosphere and, uh, of course, impressions that are given and images, of course, you know, you go back to H.P. Lovecraft and, you know, probably the master of these things. And um, this is uh, Coscarelli's Phantasm in a nutshell. I mean, it is, it's a, it's a film about uh, death, life, uh, mourning and grieving over those that we have lost in our life, not knowing how to necessarily... Um, 
process these things and of course from the perspective of Mike, a, a young 13 year old kid who's lost his parents and is clinging on to his older brother who he doesn't want to lose, um, he's trying to process this loss which is interesting because I want to make an interesting point about, about that. Um, you mentioned something about uh, earlier about the tall man and the ice cream truck scene. What was it again? Um, uh, the tall man on Main Street when um, Mike was walking on like one side of the street and he looks on the other and he sees the tall man walking and when they're like parallel of each other, there's Mike, there's Reggie and his truck and the tall man. And what I was saying earlier was like basically like a grand picture of the whole um, uh, timeline of like how Reggie is like trying to protect and like watch over Mike and like this reference that he's in between the tall man and um, Mike. And that's kind of interesting because you know I've often seen that scene play out. I've often saw Angus or the tall man's reaction to Mike, not necessarily um, the coldness coming out of the truck. Um, but there is much something really bigger and it's funny when you follow the logic through the entire franchise Which is an, an amazing thing when you consider the film It's up an independent film three hundred thousand dollars. I think it costs it's grossed over 11 million domestically here in this country and it's um, it, Well, you you it's piecemeal now. How, how long does it take to make this movie? Uh, three four years maybe two and yeah, mostly shot on um, weekends, right? Yeah. And, and it's, it's uh, you know, and so you got a film that's an independent, just uh, that will ultimately spawn this incredible franchi franchise. Um, of course, the one film stand that really stands out that gets the big studio treatment, uh, of course, being Phantasm 2. Um, but the rest of them are probably, uh, you know, go right back to the original film, that independent film, uh, mostly. But by the end of the franchise, you're really at a weird place where for the longest time you've often thought that the perspective was from Mike, but then they sort of flip it around and make it almost seem as though the the um, perspective might have been from Reggie the whole time. And that it was Reggie all along that was trying, that was dealing with this loss or trying to protect and consumed with all of us and not knowing how to process. And I thought, so that's kind of interesting that you picked uh, up on that. Um, few things about the film, of course, you know, this is the Arrow edition, and uh, last time I checked, which was today, uh, you can still get this on Amazon UK if you're region free for like 70 pounds, which is about 30, 40 pounds more than what it was when I got it, so if you don't have it, if you've been wanting it, really wanting it, um, time is probably disappearing before this is, you know, eventually perhaps reaches that out of print stat. Um, but you know, what's weird about this movie too is there was a time it's really hard to imagine because we live in the world now of, well, Go USA having given us the box set, Arrow giving us the box set. But there was a point in time when this film, I didn't even have a single copy of this film until one day in Goodwill, I just happened to cross the VHS for you know, 50 cents or something. And so I finally got it and then it wasn't long after that I found a copy of the special edition online and then of course, you know, we were all very happy when Arrow dropped its news and Wellgo USA dropped its news and and for those who don't shop out of the US we're fortunate too that they were at least had a chance to pick up the original Phantasm and Ravager uh, Blu-ray releases via Walmart and probably other places um, but it's a uh, Phantasm I mean this is a film that as I said when I was a kid now we both got to see it on the big screen but that wasn't the first time you saw it though right no, the, the big screen was the first time yeah. I saw it. it. That was the first time you saw the movie ever? Yeah. I forgot about that. Not like images, though. I've seen images right. of it before, though. So his first experience seeing Phantasm was literally on the big screen. I was thinking that was just zombie. Um, but uh, but we did get to see it when J.J. Uh, Abrams re-released the film, remastered it. Um, and it's got its limited theatrical uh, release, and we did get to see it up in Buffalo, New York. Uh, in a theater, and what do you think of seeing it on the big screen? It was really nice. Wish I could do it again. Um, really like sitting up on like the back or like middle and just watching on like a grand 
you know. Um, now, having me having seen it multiple times, I'll tell you, man, the the job J.J. Abrams did was in, was fantastic. Um, the remaster, just uh, the transfer, the sound. There were things I picked up watching it on the big screen um, that I had never even really picked up on before. Just uh, one example in the the cemetery scene in the beginning, just with the rain falling. Uh, I guess hit me in a way it never hit me before. And that's the beautiful thing when you see new transfers of things come out. Um, so, Phantasm. Um, I really don't know a whole lot what more to say about this film. I mean, I don't know what there is not to like about it. I mean, it is steeped in nightmare logic, and for some, they have a hard time following uh, that idea. Um, but for me, I mean, do you have a hard time following it? Um. No, I understand. Just the narrative as it plays out, and it is a film that is images. It's built upon imagery and illusion and just uh, a lot of metaphors going on, and just uh, it, it may come across as incoherent and not make sense, but it really does in the end. The film makes, I think, all the sense in the world, just like any one of Bolchi's movies that, you know, this it just turns people off sometimes. I don't know. You know... I did understand one through four, but when I saw five for the first time, that was kind of confusing. So it was jumping, hit this dimension, this dimension, this dimension. Oh, he's alive. He's still alive. Um, they're all still alive in the end. Um, the small guy's still alive. <laughs> yeah, it's it, and it's the only one that wasn't directed by Don Coscarelli, although he had a big hand in its, you know, in being involved in it. Um, it was not directed by him. And unfortunately, um, you know, that may be the end of Phantasm. I don't know. I don't know if we'll get another one or not ever get another one. But, uh, uh, yeah, so uh, this is theme week again. And, uh, you know, I thought I'd just take a few minutes and look at Phantasm. Of course, this is the beautiful Arrow release of it. And uh, it really even 70 pounds. I don't know if it's uh, you're getting all the films, the special features, a nice book, a sphere, and a um, nice box it comes in. And, um, you know, it's... Uh, beautiful transfer and uh, of course I'm sure some out there have the well go, well go USA box set and uh, and of course you can still find individual you know the individual release of these films via uh, Amazon um, if you've never experienced Phantasm I don't know what you're waiting for this is uh, it is a film that really impacted me as a kid and uh, I was glad that he got to see it on the big screen for the first time uh, his view was on the big screen and uh, it's, it's just, uh, it's one of those movies that just, it never seems to ever, ever, ever leave you. Ever. You know, it's been two, three years since I first saw it. If, I, if you never, if you never asked me, that, or like never took me on watching it with you, I never saw it, say I, if I never saw it, I probably would be a little different. Well, not a little, probably a big difference right now, like what movies I would like, of course. So you, think, and stuff. so you think this movie impacted you in the music and other films that you like? See, I mean, it's, it, the movie has this unreal, uncanny sort of ability to... And maybe this is what... I mean, maybe having seen this as a young kid, it probably set the stage for my gravitating to things like the Gates of Hell trilogy and just films built on imagery and... Uh, um, this nightmare logic, say. Um, it's, uh, I mean, that's what I'm, that's what I lean towards for some reason. I don't know, I just, I don't mind it. It, it, it intrigues me to kind of just get sucked in and not necessarily have to have everything linear in a way that has to go step by step by step by step. I don't mind not doing that. In fact, I like not doing that. So, uh, VHS 82 apostrophe, theme week again, nostalgia and, uh, I can't think of many other movies other than the original Phantasm that has impacted my life in such a way that it will never leave my life. And I'm very thankful for Arrow as well as Well Go USA just for these companies offering up these releases. And uh, also a quick shout out to my UB Bulls who uh, took down Arizona State and now have to take on the Red Raiders. That'll be a much larger task. But... Uh, Hoping, hoping uh, the UB Bulls uh, do some more damage in this tournament before uh, it's over. And uh, anyways, as always, we'll leave here with Go Bills.